Welcome back to Film Flick Recap. Have you ever felt the need to help people, especially those who have no one to help them? Today, we will talk about the 2014 action thriller, The Equalizer One. This movie depicts the character of a man who is always willing to help the oppressed no matter the risk involved. Before we continue, please click the subscribe button and like this video. It will encourage the team. Now, let's begin. Robert McCall leads a simple life as a home mart employee, where he is well-liked and helpful to his co-workers. They have no clue about his past. He assists his friend Ralphie in shedding some weight so he can qualify for a security guard position. He encourages him to concentrate on improving, not being flawless, when he finds him snacking on chips in a sandwich. Robert struggles with insomnia and OCD, which makes him to be meticulous about timing his actions. He spends his nights at a diner, reading books and drinking tea. He is currently reading The Old Man and the Sea. A young prostitute, who occasionally talks with him, asks him if the old man has caught the fish yet. He says no. She leaves after finishing her pie. At work, some of Robert's co-workers are intrigued by his previous job and often make inquiries about it. On one occasion, he claimed he was a backup singer for Gladys Knight and did a little dance for them. Robert returns to the diner that evening and sees the same girl again. She comments on his new book and he tells her how the previous one ended. They chat for a while, until a limo stops in front of the diner. The girl gets a phone call from Slavi, her pimp, who tells her to go to the limo and service the client inside. The girl protests, saying she hates that client, but Slavi doesn't care. She reluctantly leaves the diner and joins the fat man in the limo. The following night, Robert spots the girl at the diner again, but she has a mark on her face. He gives her a donut from his job. She does something unexpected and sits with him at his table. She introduces herself as Terry, but says her real name is Alina. She hands Robert a CD with her singing on it and asks him to play it later. She figures out that Robert is a widower and still thinks about his wife. Robert admits her guess and says that he reads books that his wife wanted to read but didn't get to. They walk out of the diner together and stroll for a while. As they are about to part ways, a car stops near them. It is Slavi and his driver Tavi. Slavi gets out and hits Alina. Robert considers stepping in but Alina tells him not to. Robert notices Tavi holding a gun. Slavi walks up to Robert and gives him a card with his contact details and suggests he pick another girl. Alina's absence at the diner for several days worries McCall. He finds out from the diner's boss that she was badly beaten and is in the hospital. He visits her and sees her face swollen and bruised. He also sees another girl, Mandy, who is sobbing next to her. He stays out of sight and does not enter the room. Mandy passes by him later, still crying. She spills her coffee and McCall helps her. He asks about Alina and says he is a friend. Mandy tells him that Slavi hit Alina and she fought back. Slavi got angry and punished her harshly. Mandy also says that Slavi once threw battery acid on a girl's face and keeps her around to scare the other girls. He does not care about them at all, only about the money they make. McCall thinks about what to do for a few days. He decides to use the card Slavi gave him and goes to a restaurant where Slavi and his men are. He goes to the office above the restaurant with an envelope with $9,800 inside. He offers it to Slavi to let Alina go. The men laugh at him and Slavi says that Alina is too young and profitable to let go for that amount. He says that $9,800 would only pay for one month of her freedom. He mocks McCall's offer and tells him to go home and jerk off 9,800 times. Then, maybe, Alina would not be so valuable and he would think about freeing her. McCall takes the money back and walks away. He is about to leave but then he changes his mind and locks the door. He watches the men and their weapons carefully, then sets his watch and acts. He twists the arm of the man who shoots at him, making him hit Slavi in the throat. He smashes a shot glass into his eye. He takes the knife from another man and stabs him with it, then grabs a corkscrew and plunges it into Tavi over and over until he pushes it under his chin and kills him. He goes to Slavi and tells him how his body is dying and how long he is left. Slavi asks, who are you? But he doesn't answer and counts down the last seconds before Slavi dies. Robert says sorry and leaves. He cleans himself and sleeps well for the first time. Teddy, a Russian mob boss, comes to Boston to find out who killed Slavi and his men. He works with some bad cops to get clues and they think it was a gang war. At his job, McCall sees that Ralphie is not there. A manager says Ralphie quit. McCall then goes to a restaurant that Ralphie's mom owns. Ralphie is helping her after a fire that was not an accident. Meanwhile, Teddy is taken by one of the crooked cops, Frank Masters, to the workplace of a gangster named John Looney, to continue his search for the killer. John insults Teddy, and all Russians in general. 
In response, Teddy hits John with an ashtray while Frank shoots John's men. Teddy then beats John until he passes out. Remar and Peterson, two corrupt cops, dine at the restaurant owned by Ralphie's mom. They demand money from her for protection and threaten to cause another accident if she doesn't pay on time next week. McCall confronts them outside the restaurant and says he wants to report a crime. They ignore him and tell him to call 911. He then calls one of them on his personal phone. McCall shows them a video he recorded of them forcing a store clerk to pay them before they admit to setting the fire at the restaurant. McCall gives them a choice, return the money or the video goes public. The cops point their guns at him, but McCall defeats them easily. They eventually agreed and later gave the money back to Ralphie's mom. Some days later, we see McCall playing baseball with his colleagues when Ralphie arrives in a security guard outfit, having passed his exam. At work, Robert visits Jenny, a cashier, for a refund when he sees she's being robbed silently at gunpoint by a man. McCall calmly approaches and hands him the money. The robber also wants Jenny's ring, which had been given to her by her mother. She gives it to him with tears in her eyes. McCall notices several details of the man, like his tattoos and his clothes. He decided not to act because some children were coming into the store and could get hurt. McCall follows the man outside and memorizes the car plates on his vehicle. The cops tell them that this was one of many robberies by the same man. We see McCall going to get a sledgehammer from a shelf. The next day, Jenny finds her ring in the register and McCall is seen putting the sledgehammer back on the shelf after cleaning it. Teddy learns that Alina has disappeared and confronts Mandy, who claims she barely knew her. He later visits Mandy again and forces her to admit that she lied. He makes her tell him about the night she went to see Alina at the hospital and she mentions a mysterious and kind black man who also asked about Alina, but she never learned his identity. Teddy then kills her by strangling her for lying to him. Using this new clue, Teddy finds video footage of McCall entering the restaurant but not leaving. He poses as a detective and goes to McCall's apartment, but McCall quickly realizes he is not who he says he is and gives him rehearsed answers. Teddy leaves, suspecting that McCall is hiding something. Teddy digs deeper into McCall's background, but what he finds shows a clean slate with no connection to Slavi's murder. Teddy feels that everything they know about McCall is fabricated. He and Frank, along with another henchman, wait in a car while another one goes into the diner where McCall is having a meal. McCall spots the man right away and asks him if he is expecting anyone else. The man draws a gun and approaches him. A truck parks in front of the diner, blocking Teddy's view from his car. McCall hits the man in the belly with his book and then breaks his neck by slamming his head on the table. He then cuts the power by stabbing a knife into an outlet. He walks out of the diner and takes pictures of Teddy and his men in their car with his phone before walking away. McCall's home address is known to the gangsters, who pursue him there. He prepares some honey to heal a gunshot injury as the men break into his home. They storm into his apartment and find out that McCall is actually in another apartment, observing them through hidden cameras. McCall has left clues in his apartment that suggest he is leaving town, but Teddy is not convinced and thinks he is being watched. McCall does leave town, but only to visit his former colleagues Brian and Susan Plummer. They used to work together for a secret intelligence agency. McCall requests Susan to find out more about Teddy and his employers. While she is away, Brian and McCall discuss McCall's car bomb incident that made everyone, including Brian and Susan, think Robert was dead. Brian says that somehow, Susan sensed Robert was still alive. When she comes back, she informs McCall that the men he killed belong to the Russian mafia led by Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy, whose real name is Nikolai, is Pushkin's enforcer who handles any problem with ruthless efficiency. Rimar and Peterson were working for Pushkin, but they were found dead a few days ago with their genitals shot and stuffed into their mouths. Susan cautions McCall that these men will stop at nothing to kill him and everyone he loves. Robert departs the next morning after getting Susan's approval to assume his former identity and complete what he began. McCall tracks down Frank Masters and corners him in his vehicle, which he has connected to a hose from the exhaust pipe. He warns Frank that he has to reveal useful details about Pushkin's activities or he will abandon him in the vehicle to suffocate. Frank eventually gives in and leads McCall to a warehouse where the Russians sort and store massive stacks of money, clearly millions of dollars in cash. McCall subdues the gangsters and binds them in a room with all the money for the police to discover. He then liberates all the workers and gives them a farewell bonus from Pushkin's money. He handcuffs Frank to a post and tells him to make a report. He then convinces Frank to be a decent cop one last time and give him the information he knows Frank has probably hidden somewhere in case he ever needed leverage on Pushkin. When the police arrive, they find the gangsters, the money, and arrest Frank. 
McCall goes to Frank's safety deposit box and retrieves some money, passports, and a USB stick containing more information detailing Pushkin's activities and revealing everyone currently on Pushkin's payroll, including cops, deputies, politicians. McCall anonymously sends the information to the detective in charge of the warehouse bust. McCall also finds one of Pushkin's oil tankers and destroys it along with several trucks and a warehouse. Teddy hires a group of Russian killers to help him find and eliminate McCall. He is having dinner with the leader of the group when the leader excuses himself to the restroom. Soon after, McCall takes his seat across from Teddy and puts the leader's bloody glasses on the table, indicating that he is dead. McCall and Teddy have a talk in which McCall reveals that he knows Teddy's identity and gives him a chance to end the conflict before McCall destroys his whole operation. Teddy rejects the offer and dismissively tells McCall that he is insignificant to him. McCall leaves after hinting that he will continue his mission. Teddy ignores a call from Pushkin. He eventually discovers a photo of McCall leaving work with Ralphie and thinks he has found a way to hurt McCall. Two of Teddy's men kidnap Ralphie, Jenny, and other Home Mart workers, threatening to kill them unless McCall meets Teddy at the site of the tanker explosion. They track his phone and wait for him to show up. When he doesn't appear at the rendezvous point near the ruined oil terminal, the thugs in Home Mart get ready to shoot one of McCall's colleagues. All of a sudden, music started playing over the speakers. One of the criminals takes Ralphie to locate the source and is killed by McCall. The other captor gets lured away from the hostages by McCall speaking Russian and then also gets killed. In a dark warehouse, McCall hunts down Teddy and his men, who are looking for him. He uses the tools and materials he finds there to set up deadly traps. He kills some of them with barbed wire, a knife, and a nail gun. He fights a big thug and gets hurt, but manages to finish him off. Ralphie comes to help him, but gets shot in the leg. McCall tricks one of the men into the break room, where he has planted gas canisters in a microwave. Ralphie turns on the power, and the break room explodes. Teddy is the only one left alive. He finds Ralphie and is about to kill him, when McCall appears and shoots him repeatedly with his rifle. Teddy glared at him as he walked up to him and shot him in the throat. He had successfully killed all of the men as he walks out of the store. Three days later, McCall sneaks into Pushkin's house in Moscow while he is taking a shower. He turns the lights on and off and makes the sink overflow. Pushkin talks to him for a while, then grabs his gun. He calls for his guards, but then sees that McCall has cut the wires and left them in the water. He steps on the water and gets electrocuted. McCall leaves the house, passing by many dead guards on his way out. After settling back into his peaceful life in Boston, McCall is greeted by Alina, who has recovered from her ordeal. She informs him that she has a legitimate job and has begun to read books. She also mentions that she discovered an envelope with nearly $10,000 among her belongings when she left the hospital. She expresses her gratitude to McCall, hinting that she somehow knows he was the one who rescued her, and gives him a peck on the cheek before they part ways. McCall continues his peaceful life but with a new mission. He posted an ad for people who feel hopeless and trapped with no way out. One night at the diner, he receives a message asking for help. He simply replies, yes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the recap. Do subscribe to the channel, like and share this video for more recaps like this. Also, drop a comment. We'll love to hear from you. Until next time, stay safe.